morning, everyone. Or good afternoon, actually. It just turned lunchtime. I'm very excited today about the Bible study. I hope you are. It's about prophetic uh, revelation in dreams. Like, we don't all have them, right? So let's talk about that a little bit. One of you, I told you if you would send some questions in or if you had something that was on your heart, if you wanted to let me know, I would look into it and answer it. And this is one of the questions from last week that was posted. So I'm going to help you guys unpack that. I'm excited to do that for you. So how's everyone doing? Who's on? Yes, that's what I want to get for you guys. So I've got a couple of things as we're getting everyone situated. I'm on time and I know that freaked out half of you. <laughs> Um, if you want to catch some more classes for free, some things that I, I've been teaching on or something you want to go back, I take them off my Facebook page periodically because I only try to keep a couple on. Hey, Chris. Hi. Oh, so wonderful to see you. I cannot wait to see you in person. It would be so awesome if that was next week. <laughs> um, Here's some more teachings for free. Do you like free teachings? I love them. So uh, we've been teaching a lot on uh, on the prophetic with Elijah and Elisha and some somewhat with Joshua too, so that you can get all those teachings. Wouldn't that be amazing to get, uh, get into it? You won't have missed anything. So you're welcome to those. Um, I'm teaching a class now on the Holy Spirit expressions. It's a six week class. We're just on week two. Part of the class is you get a copy sent to you of the audio of the video, so you wouldn't miss anything if you still want to get in on that. We're having so much fun. Um, Tron and I are teaching at my friend from Norway, and last week he just unpacked the powerhouse gifts. I mean, he unpacked them. He told us story after story. I mean, there's at least an hour of testimonies um, from raising the dead off the street. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so it was incredible. So uh, if you would like to get in on Holy Spirit expressions, you still have time. We're very excited about that class. We're already talking about, you know, uh, doing another cycle and bringing it even deeper because there's so much to talk about on this uh, subject. So if you're interested, please let me know by uh, dropping me a note. So I'm going to be starting my new cycle of classes for everyone. They'll run around five to six weeks. Usually if it's six weeks, it's because an impartation is with it. So the classes I'm going to be teaching starting in May are going to be uh, on this one's called Healing Unraveled. It's a, a five week course on how to pray for the sick in my oddball kind of way. So things that God showed us along the way that were just crazy and fun and something you can do and take right onto the street. So if you'd like to do that with us, that's gonna um, be, um, that'll start May 2nd, 3rd or 4th, one of those weeks, I haven't decided which one will have it. It'll be Sunday, Monday and Tuesday night, I will be teaching. And um, one will be spiritual authority because that was so cool and we brought that up to another level. It's a, it's a four week class, it might be a five before I'm finished with it, <laughs> but that one's coming up. And then I'm thinking of doing a dream intensive again. So we're gonna talk today about dreams. And so if this is something that sparks your heart and you think, oh, I'd like to hear it a little bit more about that that's a class you want to take so just uh please just text me or let me know part of what i'm looking for is uh regional so i know that there's an interest for the classes i just i'm trying to figure out the timing so i look at the region of the people that are most interested where they're from so if you message me make sure you let me know where you're from so i'll look at the timing and, and i try to make something that will be appropriate for you <laughs> So are you having a good week? Who else is on? So I see Chris is on. Jen Ford, good morning from Canada. Yes, welcome. And Christine Kerr, I don't know why. You were really on my heart this morning. So come on and on. Glory to God. And Victoria, yes, they are so awesome. <laughs> Thanks for joining in. And Andrea, all right. One of our prophetic um, international um, prayer warriors. She's one that prays with us on Thursdays. 
Yay, God. So you guys, um, uh, thank you so much for joining. This is about dreams. I want to share with you one of the questions I had last week was from one of the leaders in Canada. What do you do when someone has a dream? They interpret it themselves, make decisions off of it and go, you know, somewhere, maybe not the right direction with it. How do you handle that? So this is what we're going to talk about today. Does God speak prophetically in dreams? <laughs> and so if he does, how do we know it's from him? You know, are all dreams from God? And then we're going to talk a little bit too about like, how do we know, like how much weight we should put in a dream that God gives us? Like, should I, should I, if I get a dream about, um, selling my house should i sell my house i mean how much weight should we put in it so we'll just cover a little bit I, it, we're going to cover way more in the course and, and there's a lot more q a time too so i highly recommend that you do this we're gonna um go back with uh, joseph uh, we um, unpacked that a couple of days ago talking about our destiny and purpose which was awesome because it you know it was really joseph's life shows the differential right between um what our natural giftings are, what we're, our propensities, the giftings that we have that are in the natural realm, and then the ones that we have that are supernatural. So it was a beautiful mix with Joseph's life on that story. So I love that one for that. All right, so we're gonna I'll open up in prayer. Let's see who else is. Hey, yeah, Pam Dyke. Yeah, that was her that had the question last week. That's exactly right. And Miriam, come on. All right. Oh, well, good. I'm glad you would be able to catch it back later. That's awesome. That's one thing I like. I'll keep this up for a couple of weeks before I take it down. So um, also locally, if you live locally in this area, uh, we're having a women's breakfast on Saturday. They're very powerful. The last two have been incredibly uh, life impacting and also incredibly fun. Gabriel, uh, she's probably on Gabby. She cooked us like we should, it was like a five star meal last time. Like, I mean, seriously, she went all out. We had shrimp, everything. I mean, it was awesome. And this week, we're going to have it at Miss Betty's house, which she's usually on too. So we'll see her in a little bit. And um, she's an amazing uh, chef. So there, the food is amazing. But the presence of God is crazy. He just came in and just made it real and raw and um, just lives were impacted and a lot of prophetic ministry. And you can't help in the, in this house not to get some. So if you would like to come, we'd like to invite you, message me if you're in the Maitland area and I will send you the address. So that's what's happening on um, Saturday. And then Friday night, if you're in the Maitland area over at 331 Lake Ave, at the Good Shepherd Church in the back, we rent the Sarah Hall and we are having prophetic labs. So if you wanna practice the prophetic on live people, <laughs> isn't that a crazy idea? Come on, you should come. Uh, we, have, we seriously have such huge, God does so many crazy stuff, even if it's a small group, we tend to even have bigger encounters. So um, we have learned to live for those. So it's, it's just beautiful. If you'd like to do that, hey, why not? Come on, be a part of that. And then uh, if Chanel Howell is on, Chanel has got, uh, no, that next week, yeah. So Chanel's got a, um, a prophetic guy, Anthony Wells, that's coming in town in Orlando and you can connect with her. And that's something that she's um, open, that's open for everyone. If you'd like to do that next Saturday, I believe. So, or Friday, next Friday. And then, um, anyway, so those are some things going on locally. I hope that you uh, are, you know, I think Kay, too, has something with um, Joshua Giles this weekend. So you can connect with her, and she can give you all the details on that. So there's some prophetic stuff happening, stirred up in the spirit. Why not jump in and just take be a part of that? Then God's giving you opportunity. When we came here, I told the Lord, don't send me to Florida. Send me anywhere else. Do not send me to Florida. Is it the end of the United States of America? I do not want to go to the end. I want to be like dead smack in the middle so I can hit all the revivals easy. <laughs> so we took vans. We had two of them. We take vans everywhere. Fill them up with people, young people, that are all ages, and we took them to revivals. And I'm like, ah, I'm not going to go to Florida. It'll take me six hours just to get out of this state. But the Lord really gave us a dream. <laughs> and, um, 
you know, we just knew that we knew that we knew that we had to come. And so we did. But the Lord told me, he said, don't worry about it, because this is what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to send all the revivals, ist, all those that flow in that and also revival to Orlando. So it was like, OK, well, I won't have to worry about it. So I, my travel time has gone down a little bit because they're all here and they keep coming. So take advantage of those things, guys. But that's why I believe that we are high favor in Orlando what um that what God's doing in the city is crazy good um the voices that are rising up you know passionate pursuers of him I mean it's just amazing what God is doing and um this city will be known this city will this city will be a city of revival but it will be known as light in the world so super love Orlando so blessed that we were here anybody else yeah I see the fire of God coming up come on <laughs> yeah, it's good to be part of the plan we got in right <laughs> all right so let's talk a little bit about the, uh, a dream so you have a dream and you're wondering you know is this a God dream is this from the Lord okay so not every dream is going to be from the Lord there are some dreams we call them soul dreams now soul dreams are um hard to discern from a, a god dream for some people because the soul is what you long for it's the longings of your soul which is, you know why so downcast oh my soul why is it downcast because it's the passions that we have it's the the strong emotions right so a lot of soul dreams um you know can be about the things you want maybe not necessarily the things that god is talking about but the things your soul wants ha so you have to have discernment but that's okay because it's a gift right of the holy spirit get the discernment and you can have it so you can ask the lord for discernment so well, an easy way on soul dreams is you check and see if they're biblical if they don't line up with jesus guess what you don't get them <laughs> so you take the word to it so a lot of times like um when i was in finland one time this lady came up to me and told me this dream that she had where her um co-worker very good looking extremely popular wealthy man was um having a, a terrible marriage that's what she saw in the dream the marriage and you know, the wife just disrespected him didn't love him and she said in the dream he reached out to her and she knew that she knew that she was the answer for his life that she was the woman for him <laughs> okay so that's a soul dream <laughs> that's what your soul wants <laughs> jesus doesn't like affairs oh wow it's shocking he doesn't like adultery Oh my goodness he he doesn't like a promiscuous promiscuous lifestyle he doesn't like all that stuff it's called sin and he said don't do it so here the the deal with that is you have to you know you know get have a spirit of discernment and if you're not sure because sometimes they're not like blatant sin a lot of times when guys have crush on girls you know they keep dreaming that that's the one you know what you want to do is you want to take your dream to somebody else that is an interpreter and you ask them don't tell them what you think the dream means just say hey would you pray about it and would you look into this dream and you should have a community such as the one this is uh, John Paul Jackson trained us my husband and I when we are um, we went all the way up to the ranks until we trained the teachers so this is something that we we live with and we develop a community on that and then we continue to teach on that and so then we have students that grow up and they're in it and they're doing a great job and they're interpreting dreams and it's a process so you, you just get to interpret dreams with each other so that you can help each other out on the parts that you know you need short up on but so what i would do is if i have any type of dream even like a dream that seems really good or whatever that's causing me to make a direction in my destiny or purpose i'm always going to run that dream through someone else and if somebody comes up to me and says to me i had a dream about you valerie and um you know and it's a direction dream or even a correction dream so when we were in finland once this um one of the leaders that we were staying with said hey one of my people had a dream about your team and i said oh that's awesome and he goes oh no it's not and I was like, oh, 
oh, okay. And so he told me this dream that they had and he was like, you know, really, like it was a real negative connotation with the way he was telling it. I couldn't see any negative in the dream, but I decided not to interpret it. I didn't even ask the Lord what it meant. I said, you know what, why don't we write it down and make sure we have it right and I'll send it to a dream team and have them look at it. Because I didn't even want to use my own bias. I mean, I could be defensive, right? That's not me. Oh, no. I, whatever. So, you you know, when it, it's playing on me, I don't. I want to make sure I don't have something vested in it. A lot of times, I'll just send that dream out. I'll send it to somebody else. I, why not? And then, have you ever send a dream to someone you know maybe because you're like i'm not sure what it means i've had that happen i had a huge destiny dream for five years that was huge i mean if when god does that ha, come on <laughs> you guys will know it it's huge and i was like thinking to myself you know i don't know i'm thinking i'm unpacking this wrong i don't know I, this this is just like too much and whatever so I was like really contemplating. I mean, I could see the big picture, but all the details and the nuances, I was just lost on it. And so for five years, you know, I prayed into that and said, Lord, what does this dream mean? What is my part of this dream? Because we honor all dreams, right? You honor all dreams that God gives us by acting on them in some way. And I'll, I'll pack, unpack that in a second. So I was like, God, I don't want to dishonor you by not ever moving on what you said. So what do I do? So first level of all dreams is to pray into them. That's what every dream should be prayed into. There's not one dream you should have. Because even if it's a soul dream, hey, you can say, hey, Lord, you know, is this a soul dream? The Lord tells you, then you pray into it. Lord, I don't want what my soul wants. I want what you want. My soul is going to long after you. I command my soul to long after you. So Lord, take these things out of my soul and put into me those things that you want me to long for. See, that, that's something. That's me responding to a soul dream. So anyway, so you're gonna do this. You're gonna get your dream interpreted, you know, maybe you send it out to someone else and they're gonna, you know, give you some insight on it. And, you know, it's not going to be connected to your biases or whatever. So sometimes it's good to do that, especially if you don't know. So I'm like, you know, for all those years, five years, I didn't know what it meant. And so finally, I, I decided I'm going to take it to John Paul. <laughs> Why not? I have access. <laughs> so we were at a um, training, a teacher's training thing. And there was a line, so I got in the line and I was like, uh, there was like 10 people in front of me and everybody was, you know, asking John Paul different questions and whatever. So I was like waiting for my turn. And I'm like, seriously, waited like nine people and I'm now one person away from talking to him. And then while I'm standing there going over the dream in my head so I could say it correctly to him, <laughs> it unpacks. The entire dream, like no questions. It was the easiest dream to interpret on the planet. But for five years, I didn't know what it meant. Five years. And I'm not like just meandering about it. I mean, I'm on it because I don't want to miss what God wants to do. So I'm like, what? So sometimes I believe God hides a meaning of a dream for a season. Then I also believe that sometimes, you know, we go and like I had taken that dream originally to <laughs> a very high dream interpreter. <laughs> Very high. And I, I mean, I know. I've seen his track. I've seen him. He's extremely good. And I, he gave me the interpretation of the dream. And I thought to myself when he gave it, this is bull. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, no way. This is not right. And I'm like, ah. But then I was like, oh, you know, you know, I didn't trust myself. So I went off of his revelation and I just had a painful, I'm telling you, a painful a year or two. While I tried to do it the way he was unpacking it. But Anyway, so, but that, I like that about dreams is that actually you will find out even as we read our story today is that you can tell when you, somebody unpacks a dream correctly or if they unpack it mostly correctly, <laughs> that's not a word, <laughs> that's not a right way to say it, or if they're totally off. So sometimes that happens, you, you know, the, it's almost right, but not this one part. And sometimes those things are hidden for a reason, you know, you might have to take the course to get into the details on why or how those things happen. So you've got your dream 
and you know finally it comes to pass well now you're accountable for what you know right you're accountable for what you know so i love what john paul jackson told us and this is one of my favorite things that i i always hold with dreams is that inherently in every dream that god gives us is the power to bring about change in the things he's speaking about that's beautiful if you knew the way to that friends wow if you knew the way to that that means that God's never talking to you in a dream about something that he's not willing to work on move on and begin to use and he gave you the dream because there's something inside of you friend <laughs> that will bring that about because otherwise would have given it to me they gave it to you because there's something in you that's gonna unlock this <laughs> isn't that awesome so I love that then I've had a couple of dreams in the dream the Lord or an angel or someone in authority will come and tell me well, one of them was um, a woman in authority came up to me and and said do you see all this land and I'm looking at this huge amount of land lakes and mountains and rolling hills it was gorgeous and I said yes and she said will you release the glory in the land I remember even in the dream thinking, oh my goodness, if she asked me to do it, it means I can. <laughs> See, there's inherent power in what you're dreaming about. And so there's, and then there's a responsibility. What happens if I never lose the glory in the land? Because I thought it was a cute dream. Because I thought, oh, I don't know how to do that. Because whatever, whatever reasons that you, you can just stack them all up. Well, you're accountable for what you know. And so that's part of um, dreams is they're not complete revelation, right? They're hidden revelation. They're symbolisms and symbols of things to come. Now you can have visions, which are more accurate, but I'm talking about dreams, which, you know, you've got the flying um, gooses or, you know, you've got the disappearing people or you, you're flying off of mountains yourself. Those are symbols of things. <laughs> I remember, um, you know, one of my friends, one of the people on leadership with me one time, you know, I was over the youth at the church and came up to me and said, hey, I had a dream that these two young people were um, getting married. And I was like, okay, well, you know that that's a symbol and it's not the truth. So you don't tell them that dream because you're going to mess with them. Don't do that. So, of course, she did. And it was horrible reaction stuff. I, you know, I had to really forgive this girl she really uh, put a wound in both of those people because of that so and then the same with death a lot of times when people are dying in a dream God doesn't see death like we see it but the death dying in the dream is usually something coming to an end and it often often is very good and one girl I remember came she was a teenage girl she uh, had this dream that her dad died he was in the class with me teaching <laughs> like how oh, there you go right there all right out there and um you know we interpret the dream for her and it was about a, um, a problem in their relationship that was dying and going to be dead and not come back again and not awesome but you know freaked her out <laughs> so and I've seen that with tons of parts so it's good to have other it's good to have friends that are dream interpreters and it's good to learn this for yourself so that you can help other people yes um, you know, in course, I was just reading Ali's Brooks um, thing. Of course, when you a lot of a lot of um, what we get in dreams is intel, on, and especially if you're an intercessor, you will get intercession dreams where God will show you what's going on. And even in the prophetic, we get that where people are telling us one thing, but we hear something else. I remember one time uh, someone was telling me about laundry. They're just talk, talking me about laundry, and I'm hearing about the person's uh, problem with um, addiction. And I know exactly what the addiction was. <laughs> but they're talking about laundry. But that's the Holy Spirit. So anyway, that's how the dreams go. I mean, there are all kinds of dreams. We can unpack that more so if you, when you take the course, we'll unpack the different types of dreams and also the different types of responses. But I thought um, would be really good just to look at this one with um, Joseph so you could see what I'm talking about in terms of 
are why how, what God's doing with the dreams, why they're important. Let's just look at the story again. So this is Pharaoh's dream, and you can find it in Genesis chapter 41. And we're going to be out of the New King James Version just because I like to change it up on you guys. So then it came to pass at the end of the full of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream. So that full, that was um, you know Joseph in prison for these two years. And behold, he stood at the river, and suddenly there came out of the river seven cows looking um, fine looking and fat, and they fed in the meadows. So you can read this whole story. So you remember there's the five really fat ones, and then out of the uh, swamp area comes the seven that are emaciated, and they eat to pieces and totally devour the seven fat cows. So then skip down to nine, just because I, I know it's lunch hour, and you don't want to make it lunch hour till tomorrow. <laughs> When the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh saying, I remember my faults this day. And then he confesses that he had gotten his dream interpreted by this guy because Pharaoh can't find anyone in the courts, any of his wise men. He called all of his wise men, all of his magicians and said, can you interpret this dream? Because I feel like it's really important, these dreams. And they none of them could. And so now the, um, the, the wine taster remembers Joseph and his promise. So he said, hey, there's a young Hebrew man with us there, a servant of the captain of the guard. And we told him and he interpreted our dreams for us and they came to pass. So then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon and he shaved, changed his clothing and came to Pharaoh. You know, go into the king smelling like the dungeon, come on. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream. And there is no one who can interpret it, but I have heard it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And now in other interpretations, it says something more like um, all the interpretation belongs to the Lord, which is really the truth. And, and, you know, I love that Joseph wasn't saying, hey, I'm this, I'm that. He's like, God does, God's the one who does it, but God's going to use who? He's going to use Joseph to do it, go through him to do it, but he's the one who does all. And that's so true because all interpretation belongs to the Lord. Even when you're learning about symbolisms and stuff, if Holy Spirit doesn't put all that together, you'll never get the dream right. It has to be the Holy Spirit. That's why you study these things out. You can study all the analytical parts of a dream and um, the different types of dreams, and you can study different things about it, different symbolisms. But guys, it's the Holy Spirit that brings that all together, right? So when Pharaoh said to Joseph, behold, in my dream, I stood on the banks of the river and suddenly, and so he starts telling him the dream. And so he said, so I told us to the musician, I'm um, reason through here 24 and then the thin heads devoured the seven good heads so it goes from cows to wheat if you remember same theory fat ones and then the thin ones come up really go and eat the other ones and he says and so i told this to the magicians but there was no one who could explain it to me that's the wise men of the of pharaoh's whole court the all the wise men of the court and none of them none of them can tell so then Pharaoh said to Joseph, the dreams of Pharaoh are one. So both of these dreams, the cow dream and the wheat dream, they're all one. He goes, God has shown Pharaoh what he's about to do. The seven good cows are seven years. So then he interprets the dream. So how do dream interpreters get their symbolism? Use these ideas. <laughs> we go through the Bible and look at every dream that was interpreted, and we take those concepts and those symbolisms and we start to meditate on them and put them together. So that's just a trick for you <laughs> if you want to know how we get our stuff. So then the seventh, then, all right, so let's skip down. This is the thing that I have spoken to Pharaoh God has shown Pharaoh what he's about to do. And see, that's why dreams can be prophetic, because prophetic is speaking about the things that are going to happen in the future. So can dreams be prophetic, which is one of the questions we started out this broadcast with. And that's exactly right. They can. They can foretell the future. And God, in fact, likes to do that. And God wants to do that because he's extremely vested in your future, your destiny, your calling and your purpose. And not just that, but in this regard, it was for all of Egypt and all the lands. This was this actually saved a multitude of people because 
this dream, see, and leaders often have dreams that are beyond self. When I was on staff at, um, at this one church, I hardly ever told anyone my dreams except the people on staff because the dreams were so pointed about what was happening in the church, what was happening with the people in the church, what was happening with certain things, and they were always accurate. They, they came to pass later, that's how I knew. <laughs> and we were like, wow. And some of them were just horrific. I mean, I was like, what? You know, so God is vested. He's invested in you. And part of the dreams is giving us that prophetic intel that we need. So I don't think that we can actually go one without the other. We need to, we can't just say, hey, I, I'm not going to pay any attention to the dreams. Or I believe that we really suffer from the intel or the revelation that God's trying to give us. So indeed, um, seven years of, okay, where I was, so indeed seven years of great plenty will come throughout all the land of Egypt, but after them seven years of famine of Egypt, and the famine will deplete the land. So the plenty will not be known in the land because the famine following it will be very severe. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh. Come on now, here's some revelation. I'm about to tell you why you get repeated dreams. People asked me that last week uh, several times. Why am I having a dream over and over again? Sometimes it's because you didn't get it the first time, which is probably this, is he's trying to show him two different ways, the same thing. So sometimes you're getting the dream over and over again because you didn't get it. You're still pondering it. You don't understand it. So he'll come back. He'll say the same thing, but in a different way, but it's the same thing. And then here's the other one. And then the dream is repeated to Pharaoh twice because this thing is established by God and will shortly bring it to pass. Huh. So uh, have you had that in a dream where God said it over and then over again? That means it's about to come to pass. Guys, that's a timer on your dream. Then you know that you're in a dream that God's about to fulfill this thing quickly. Isn't that crazy? Huh. I can think of one <laughs> that I have, and I just, I don't know, whew, come on, Jesus. And so now, therefore, now this is what I'm telling you, you're accountable for what you know. You know, and we talked about this last week because the gift, the supernatural gift that Joseph had was interpreting dreams. That was a supernatural gift from God. He didn't, wasn't ever taught that, that or that, studied it as a child, he knew. So John Paul was like that, John Paul Jackson. But here, his natural gift is administration. We've seen that with um, how he was put over Potomar's house. And then we saw that, how he was put over the um, jail. So listen, that's his administrative, is his natural gift. And God uses both of them in your life. They're both is super important. So here, look at what happens. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over their land to collect one-fifth of the produce. He immediately mathematically broke it down. Okay, if that's seven years of, of, of um, you know, blessing, seven years of overflow, seven years of feasting, then to go into the famine, we would need one-fifth of that. That's crazy. You know, his mind thinks that way. You couldn't, he didn't, he didn't have a, he just heard it and he already has a plan. That, that's a high strategizer, planner. So collect one fifth of the produce of the land in the seven plentiful years and let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming. Store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh. So, you know what? We don't have people fighting over it and saying this and that and whatever. Let's put it under one head. And let them keep food in the cities, and then each city would have the food there so that Pharaoh's not having to cart it all over the place. They've collected it in the place and made each place sustainable. This is wisdom, guys. And then the food shall be as a reserve for the land for the seven years of famine, and it shall be in the land of Egypt, and the land will not perish because of the famine. Hey, Natasha. Hey, Yvonne. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of the servant. Pharaoh said to the servants, can we find such, such a one as this, a man who the spirit of God is on? Okay, 
so here here's the thing is when you get a dream interpreted if there's action applicable you need to do it so what kind of action is applicable a lot of times a lot of times that action is um prayer first thing always you pray into that and then you say okay all right holy spirit what do you want me to do and i love that joseph was so decisive he already came up with a plan some of us are you know contemplators or you know they have to think it out some more it's not a bad thing to do but to honor the lord you need to do something you know if you're called to do it maybe intercession is the only call and that's fine some people i know get high level details about different high level people in the world and it turns out like six months a year later is absolutely correct and accurate but they were called to pray they don't know them personally so they're not called to go and hey uh, no, this is happening in your life and just, you know, God told me. No, they, they know they don't have that um, in. So they pray for them. So they were called as the Holy Spirit wanted them to ha wanted someone to be interceding through this rough tier period of their life that was coming up. So he sent someone this dream to pray. So prayer is not, I'm not negating that as, it's the only thing, but a lot of times there's more to that, that there's something you need to do. And then you pray and ask the Holy Spirit, what is my thing to do on this? And you honor the Lord by responding to it because inherently God gave you the dream because there's something in you that has, um, God wants to move through you to bring about change in the things that you are dreaming of. Wouldn't that be a waste not to do it, friend? just to let it sit. Can you imagine if Joseph just sat there and said, yeah, that's what your dream means. But he didn't because that's who he was. That was his strength. And so he spoke out in his, uh, in that hour that God gave him in that moment of his destiny in that cuspus of time where he's, you know, he's right there straight out of prison and he has a moment and he goes for it. If that were my dream. And a lot of times, if you've ever gotten a dream interpreted by me, and don't send me all your dreams. You guys need to do it, spread it out. I've got other things too to do. I have a life path to live. Can't do everybody in the whole world's dreams. <laughs> but, you know, you've got, when, a lot of times when people send me the dream, that's what I will say. I'll say, if that were my dream, and I'll give them some direction on, you know, how to focus or what to look for. But that's what you want to do when, as you're interpreting your own dreams or you're interpreting others, you know, look for the engagement part, the part where you can engage that. So, all right. So what Pam's question was, is somebody came to the church and said, hey, I had a dream. They interpreted it themselves and then they went in a, you know, direction that looked wrong. So here's the deal is, you know, if you're in, if you are interpret if you get if you have any type of dream that's driving your direction to do something you know that's quite big like changing churches i think that was that or locations like where you move or your job or something it's always good to get a second opinion send it through someone else why why not the bible says that we um we're safe underneath the multiple counselors you know send it to someone don't tell them what you think say hey would you look in this too would you pray into this with me so what i have seen too one time this lady came to me and she said she had a dream and in the dream she saw a national leader and she saw um like somebody up on the stage with him doing some kind of you know incantations or something and he never noticed it and so she said i saw that you um you know you've told me you like this ministry and i said yeah they do and they she said well i just wanted you to know that because I had this dream, I feel like it's my responsibility to go to all the local pastors in the area and tell them that this man is involved in witchcraft. Well, first of all, it's not a correct interpretation of the dream. And second of all, <laughs> you know, it's it, that's never biblical, according to um, Matthew 18 or 28. I get the two confused which chapter it is, but it talks about going to your brother, right? And not going to everyone else. And then if they don't, yeah. So here you go. 
you know, you know, when what right do we have to go and on based on a dream go and bad talk them to everyone in the city when really it was called with intercession because she actually came out of that background and so God was um, telling her there's some witchcraft involved in that ministry and would you pray for it to be exposed which is really what the dream was talking about but instead she decided that she needed to expose the pastor so you can just see you know where is our soul taking us on some of this you know so check that out say hey this is what i think i've got this dream i feel like i'm supposed to do this yeah what do you think and then you know i had somebody you know even talking to me yesterday and i was like you know i would not do that you know that's not biblical this is what the bible says and this is the direction i would go and you know you we speak truth to each other because sometimes when we're in the middle of something we can get fuddled <laughs> we can get our we can get some stinking thinking in there so that's why we have good godly friends who stand on the word and who will stand with us and so that's how you do a, a, some of the dream interpretation that comes your way. I personally, when we moved down here, we had a dream about um, the church. And I mean, about coming to here to help with the church, but um, mostly to leave where we were living. And, um, you know, I had the dream. I knew it was um, ominous. Like I knew there was a feeling of danger with it and I felt like there was like a flea, you know, factor, but I thought, no, I don't, that's silly, you know, just dreams, you know, and I had it interpreted and it was, you need to leave. <laughs> and, um, but I, I also had a check of my, I had a, I had a, a feeling in my spirit that it was right. And there were several other things that had happened prophetically that I just felt like it was right. And even though it wasn't something I wanted to do, necessarily at all is actually the house we left is still our all our, our whole family talks about it. that was our favorite house we've ever lived in <laughs> so you know i think back to that and i am like i left in two weeks packed everything up and i just left because i heard the lord on it and i had the confirmation and people that i trusted on the dream interpretation and never telling them what i thought that's what they thought the dream meant and you know i saw the hand of the lord you know leaving favor like there was less less favor it was like lifting on where i was at and i needed to go into a place on the land where i did have favor and i had his covering and protection so we made that shift and it was exactly what it was all right so I hope that helps you with dreams and um, this is a little bit, I know we were just tapping the surface, there's so much more to it. And like I said, uh, in May, the, that first week, I'll do a dream intensive class. If you'd like to take it with us, we would love to have it, have you, and we can teach you some more. So did that help? Did you guys, did that give you some insight? I know a lot of you are dreamers because I've heard, <laughs> I've heard some of your dreams. and. Wow, I say so. I'm just, yeah. Usually, a death dream is talking about something coming to an end, so if that helps. That's usually what that means, because you know God actually sees death different. I'm going to tell you a secret: is that God usually doesn't put in a dream a coffin or you know someone you know like this. You know, that's not death to him. He, he doesn't see it that way. It's a homecoming. It's a celebration. That's how God sees death. <laughs> it's a party. <laughs> you know, it's the best thing yet. <laughs> That's how he sees it. So it's just interesting on the symbolisms. Hey, Maria, welcome back from your honeymoon. It's so good to see you. Welcome. Hi, Carol. Good to see you. Carol's taking the class on spiritual authority right now, so we'll see how she likes that. And hey, if you're taking the class with me, I think Yvonne is um, on still. But if you want to know anything about the spiritual, um, I mean, the Holy Spirit expression class, ask Yvonne. She's taking it, and she, I think, uh, I've gotten some good feedback. So yeah, ask her. She will tell you. All right, so that was my Bible study for today. I knew it was going to be on the short side, but I wanted you guys to just to see how um, Joseph unpacked the dream for uh, Pharaoh. 
and the symbolisms and how those things there's so many uh, really neat things in there like that there were seven cows it meant seven years so you can look at that in your own dreams are you having um, a group of something like three of this and then three of that it might be three years it might be three days you, you know you need to ask the Lord but I love that because even in the dream with um, the bread on top of the bread bake makers head, you know, basket, and then also the drink with um, the wine taster, they were in groups of three, and it turned out those were three days. So isn't it interesting how you can see how God moves through studying how other dreams have already been interpreted in the Bible? <laughs> All right, glory to God. I hope my friend Sam Little is on today because I wore this shirt for her. She loves feathers. When we went to Finland, she um, that was one of the shirts that she got. So I had gotten one that, and I thought, ah, oh, that'll remind that'll me and Sam will now have um, the same type of shirt. All right, so we're gonna pray. If you would like to pray with us, I'm going to. Um, yeah, I, so when I was getting ready for today, I usually ask everyone, you know, how are you doing? Are you having a good day? And, you know, I don't know about you, but I just wanted to share this with you that this week wasn't a great week. There are some things that happened, you know, with my family that was really uh, sad and um, hard to see as they're, you know, going through the, uh, uh, you know, a bump on the road. And I was just wondering if you were going through that, I just wanted to speak to you for a minute because, um, you know, when you're watching people that you love go through hard times, or maybe even for you, you're like, you know, Lord, why did this happen? Or, you know, why is this happening now? Or, you know, all of those types of feelings, like, you know, it could be different, you know, something had happened this way or something had happened that way. But the Lord really spoke to me. He said that all things work together for good for those who are in Christ Jesus. And I just want to encourage you today <laughs> that you're in him. You're in him. You're, you're called according to his purpose. You're going after him. And he is beautiful and brilliant at taking the things that come against you and making them turn around and work for you. And that's what God wants to do for you. So I just want to encourage you. I felt like there were several people that were going through that this week, myself, besides myself, my family. But I felt that that was something for you. So I just pray for the ones, and if you guys will agree with me, for everyone who's listening today that's just had a really rough week, you know, things didn't go the way they were hoping. Things, you know, even maybe with themselves, maybe they're disappointed with their reaction or something that they have done. So God, I just thank you, Father God, that you work all things together, all things. And so if we send, we can repent and God forgets about it. So that's awesome. Yes. Or, you know, if we made just a mistake, how many of you just made plain out mistakes? I, I'm, I've done at least one or two lately, you know. So Lord, I just pray, Father, that even though our mistakes, Lord, even Father God, our lack of wisdom or maybe our lack of discernment for the hour or, you know, we didn't see the pothole that we ran into or whatever. God, I thank you that even those things you'll make turn around and work for good because we are yours and we are called according to your purpose. So Father, just release fresh waves of passion for you, Lord, that we trust you. We are not moved by our circumstances, but we're moved by every word that comes out of your mouth. And I pray that faith would infuse those, God, who are struggling today in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, we release faith. We release hope, Lord. Huh. We release joy, joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord. It's the virgin bride of Israel who throws back her head and laughs at her enemies because her papa's right behind her, right? So Lord, I just pray, Father God, right now for release of joy over everyone who's going through a difficult circumstance. And I thank you, Father, that joy comes in the morning. Come on, it's just another day. And while I was praying for everyone today too, I just saw suddenly is being released. So I, I just see that, so I just release that to you. I just feel like there are circumstances and situations. I'm from Texas and we have this thing that's called a bull whip. You ever seen it? Oh man, uh, the Cowboys for Jesus one night came and did it around the campfire for us talking about how they whipped the back of Jesus. It was so powerful. Man, they're, they're an amazing group of people. 
So, but the bullwhip, I mean, it snaps. It, it sounds just like thunder. I mean, it's, I mean, it's incredible. So I just felt, I just saw God, like, I just saw that whip going out and I heard that crash and I felt like God said he's crashing in on some of you. And there's some suddenlies that are happening this week. Suddenlies where things shift like that, where you get a breakthrough or even I saw like mindsets, like mindsets being broken off. And like, all of a sudden it's like that clicked. And I, I even felt like there were some people that were like in the fog about like, I don't know what to do. And I, uh, you know, and just like and in this huge fog of indecision and uh, weakness and I, you know, um, not being able to make a right direction, go anywhere. They're just stuck. And I just saw snap that whip go and they'll suddenly come to them. So I just release that to you. I just release right now the suddenlies of God that shift the atmosphere. Lord, I thank you. You showed me that that was happening in the mindsets I saw and circumstances. I just saw suddenlies and it was a shift. And it, you know, if you've ever heard a bull whip, I mean, you don't go back on that. You know what I'm saying? I, I just see that as a permanent breakthrough in that area i see that being broken I, I see you looking back later and laughing and going what i can't even believe that that was true <laughs> it'll seem it'll seem like a dream remember that it'll seem like a dream so lord i just thank you for the breakthrough that you're doing in this group of people right now in jesus name thank you lord Thank you, Lord. We want to stir up the prophetic right now. <laughs> Sorry, it's stirred, but we'll go for it again. Yeah, so Gabby, I, I, I was praying for you, and I just felt like that, um, I felt like that there are some things that really like consistently come against you and you know it's like not really horrible but because it's so consistent though it's painful like you know what i mean like it builds up and it's gotten to the point where it's very painful but i just i just feel like there's a stop to that i, I feel like that you know there's a holy indignation that rose up with the lord and he said no more i'm done with that so I just, I just see God putting a stop to it. And I, I just think that part of it has been your loving kindness. This is for Gabby. I feel like it's been your loving kindness and your generosity or your spirit that you've just been like, okay, you know, just, you know, calling this or, you know, you just have been graceful. You have, you have extended grace, but Holy Spirit said no more. That's it. He's done with that. It's just consistent and painful. And he said, no. So I just see him stopping that. So I just feel like there's something to rise up in you, maybe even. Like you just it's done. You're not gonna take that anymore. So uh, the Lord's done with that and he put an end to it. So it's a done deal. No more in Jesus' name. Huh. So that's what I saw for um Gabri Gabriella. So Gabriella's coming to the women's luncheon. So if you would like to see a wonderful, feisty, on fire woman of God, you must come. <laughs> and so is Andrea. She's coming too. Glory to God, she said. And I think Chanel, but I'm not sure. Chanel and I are uh, getting our car back together. <laughs> Hopefully, we're both praying that it will be back on um, mine. Well, I'm praying well, mine will be back from the shop tomorrow. So, Lord, I just thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Yeah, so Chanel, I just felt like that in some ways you've had like some really childlike faith. Like you could have gotten like, you know, bogged down with some stuff, but you've had some childlike faith. Like, I'm just going to believe you no matter what, Jesus, and I just trust you. And, you know, and just that you chose to be light when you could have been down. And I just saw that, like, that this is, I just saw you like that turn into a butterfly. And I just felt like there's going to be a new beginning for you. And I'm not sure if it's over the things that, um, well, I feel like that it's that either there is a breakthrough for you that over some of the the stuff that's um, like I said the other thing with the I think you got one of those breakthroughs, but I feel like the new beginning it has to do also with um, 
a new beginning on your level of faith. I feel like that there's it's going to be like a whole new level and you'll have a new beginning on that. Like you won one level and now you get to level two or whatever level it is. I'm, I'm numbering it. But you know, when you're playing like Mario or something, you got to the next level. That's what I saw. But it'll be like a new beginning for you. So I feel like there's new things to learn on this. There's new ways to look at it, new ways to unpack it. And I feel like it's all going to be good and you'll get to the, you'll master this level and then hopefully you'll go to the next level. So I just, I just, what I see is so new beginning. So I would just come fresh on it. Say, Holy Spirit, teach me, you know, afresh. What is this new level of faith that you're giving me? There you go. <laughs> That's for you, Chanel. <laughs> oh, who's doing lunch? Oh, yeah, let's do brunch. Yeah, okay, that's us. <laughs> Anne says she wants to do lunch. I do too. And we'll, I hope to be there before, uh, before, before, uh, well, I'm actually planning on coming in the fall. So I'm just believing God and things to shift by then. So let's believe. So Lord, I just thank you for Anne. <laughs> Hungry Anne. <laughs> Yeah, so for you, and I just felt like that um, you've been stretching yourself to believe a little bit more. You've been stretching yourself to do a little bit more in the Lord. And I just saw like, um, they're like, you're, you're trying a little bit and then you're getting there. And then you go, okay, I could do that. And so I see you trying again and then getting there too. And so I just feel like you're on this journey where you're really, you're really monitoring yourself. You're like, okay, I got this. I'm not going to stay here. So what can I do next? How can I push this envelope a little bit more? Now, I believe that's with um, the gifts and the faith and all of that. And I just see that you're, you know, you're steadfast and you're true and you're at it and you're just constantly growing and then there's growth at it. And you might feel like, hey, this is like a child's play. I feel like I'm just, you know, at the beginning, but you really made quite a, a, a journey on this because you've been consistent and steadfast and God loves that about you. And I just see you just um, going and going and going and, and going down that road. So I, it's like a new adventure just around the corner. What became like, well, can I do it now has become, you know, what will happen next? <laughs> An anticipation of, okay, if I try this, this I, I just feel like that faith cometh. I just feel like that there's something in you that every time you say, hey, Lord, I'm going to try this. I'm going to stretch myself this way. Every time it happens, you're like, what? Then the next time is like, of course he's going to do it. So now what do I do? Because I want to do more. So I just see this um, hunger coming up in you in this season and just um, a, a, a real neat uh, back and forth with the Lord on going further and going deeper. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, so I'm going to pray for um, my friend in um, Canada, Jen. I love Jen. We have like several Jen, Jennifers. Jen, mostly everybody goes by Jen. Nobody really goes by Jennifer. So, <laughs> Jen Ford. It's such a nice, like, I mean, straight to the point kind of name. <laughs> like, like we're just gonna get there. Like, let's just get there. <laughs> yeah. So I just felt like that. There's something that you're building that you've been. Um, really put a lot of effort in and it's you done it's actually uh, something that has um, a spirit of excellence on it excellence on it you you really have put a lot into it and you know it's just it, it's doing good but you are stuck on a very small par part of it and you can't seem to get that part working and it's irritating you horribly <laughs> it's like it's a small part but Sorry, we cannot go in forward until we get it fixed. And I just saw that the Holy Spirit is going to give you a download on what that part is. 
that hasn't been working right and you're gonna it's gonna be an easy fix and i just he's just he's in on it he wants to bless you he loves that you um put so much of your heart and soul into this and a beautiful uh you know excellent spirit in it so he is He's gonna give you a download, and I just see you just, it's gonna be such an easy fix. You're gonna look back and go, oh, that was easy. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> oh, you're sure welcome. So, um, Lord, I just bring to you um, Noel. Lord, I thank you for her uh, heart, Lord. Uh, and I don't know where you were on Sunday. We missed you. So just so you know, I saw your empty chair and it was very sad, but I never got to find out from Aaron where you were. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you for Noel. Yeah, so Noel, I just felt like that um, there are some things in your heart that have, that, especially with your mom, that has been um, really like uh, made your heart sad. And I, I see God wanting to do some healing. And I feel like in this next season, even like now that he's going to do some healing in your heart, that um, there's some things there that um, they they really want he like I don't know it's just like I feel like there's a crawl up and daddy type of thing where you put your arms around him and he just hugs and holds you for a little bit I feel like that in your quiet time that's what you should invite Holy Spirit he would like to do that with you he'd like to um, bind up the brokenhearted I mean I know it's been a while and you've gone on but I feel like that heart that sore heart feeling especially with your mom that's what I heard is something that he wants to heal up I think he wants to give you some joy of heaven and replacement of the sorrow. And um, I also feel like, um, you know, there's just some issues there, like uh, with, you know, missing her and uh, feeling a loneliness and things like that, that he's going to feel, he's going to fill that place and he's going to heal that place. So let's just all pray for um, Noel right now. Um, her mom went on to be with the Lord last year. And if you've had that experience, I know you guys know what that's like. So Father, we just pray for Noelle's heart, Father, as she's missing her mom. God, I pray, Father, that you would, I, I see that Holy Spirit, that you want to hug her heart to wholeness again. So Lord, would you pour into Noelle's heart, Lord, just a fullness of your love, a fullness of your, of your kindness, Give her pictures of heaven, Lord. Let her see her mom in, in your arms, your mom running in heaven, picking flowers, Lord. Let her see what heaven's like. Lord, give her her joy, Lord. Give her her joy, Lord. Father, you said that you give us peace that the world can't even understand. And I believe your joy is the same. So would you come and give her joy unspeakable? What would that look like? Come on. Would you give her joy unspeakable and full of grace in Jesus' name? Amen. Wow, so May 7th, it will be one year. Wow. So, Lord, we just thank you, Father. We thank you for moving, Lord God. Let it be that that bullwhip snap a suddenly in her heart, Lord, a suddenly that the sorrow and, um, and heartache is uh, removed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm trying to see who's still on. Glory to God. Thank you guys for praying for her. I'm going to pray for Yvonne and then Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. That's so sweet. <laughs> so, Lord, I just thank you for Yvonne from England. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're moving, breakthroughing. Lord, you're, sh you're shifting and you're shaking. Yeah, so we just saw like the floor underneath you shifting and shaking, like literally, like moving around like pieces. So it reminded me of an Indiana Jones <laughs> where the floor was moving like in puzzle pieces. And I feel like that where you are right now, Yvonne, even 
or like where you've been standing, it's all shifting. I feel like God's connecting you to some new places. He's connecting you into even some new relationships and some new friends. And some of the old ones will shift out. Some will stay connected, some won't. But I feel like that, you know, if you'll stay connected with Holy Spirit in this process, it's going to be good in the end. It's going to settle down and it will be, you know, floor again. <laughs> but right now, the shifting is part of what you need to go to the next level in the things of the Lord. And the, the shifting is also causing you to have growth. You're learning your balance better. You're learning, you know, where to where to put your weight and where not to. You're very, you're every, every year, you know, every spiritual um, you know, sensory is wide open right now. So let that, let the, this is your season, you know, so there's revelation coming to you that you haven't had before at levels you haven't had before. This is your season. Every, we don't stay in seasons, seasons come and seasons go, but this is your season. So I just bless you to that, Yvonne, uh, just a peace in this and an attentiveness in the spirit at the same time. I don't know how you're going to do that, but I believe it can happen. <laughs> so I bless you to that. And I bless you to your godly connections. I bless them that they're, they're right and they're good and they're, um, they're helping you and they're solidifying the future for you in Jesus name. It's just beautiful and um, the passion I was reading about how he comes before us and he makes a way, but then he comes behind us to make sure that the past cannot harm us. That's what it says in the passion. Wow, isn't that beautiful? That your past cannot come back and harm you. Hmm, it's a good word. So Kelly Victorious, let's pray for um, our Victorious Kelly. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Kelly, Lord. Thank you for your moving on her life in Jesus' name. Yeah, I just see like, um, I just see in this process of like layering some things that I wouldn't normally would think would go together. <laughs> I don't know how to say that, but I just see like, um, I just on it, you know, I really feel like that, uh, I'm really wondering if you have the right tools for what you're trying to do. So I, I feel like that you don't, I feel like that they're not going to be effective. So I just think that God wants to give you wisdom on the right tools to do the thing you've called to do, to do the things you're, that you're longing to do, I think you need you need the right tools to do it. And you have good tools and they're like powerful, like they're good, but they're not the right ones for the, um, for the thing that you're working on. So Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you would give wisdom to Kelly to see the right tools she needs in this season and God that you would give her hand the ability to grasp them. God, I thank you, Father God, that you're the one who teaches our hands to war. You're the one who teaches our hands to work. You're the one who teaches our hands to move. God, you're the one. So Lord, we give you Kelly's hands and we ask you to fill them with the right tools for this hour in Jesus' name. And we bless her, Lord. We bless her to the spirit of discernment so she doesn't waste her time, but God, that she has fun in the process. So I thank you, Father God, for the right tools. Wow. Uh, one time Greg bought me these really nice knives. And like I have been, like I'm an avid uh, cook on my whole life. I actually wanted to go to culinary art school in the beginning. It didn't work out, but I was really contemplating. I, you know, and I took a bunch of classes in high school trying to get in that direction. So, but I just had normal knives until one day Greg bought me a professional knife. I cut my hand on both sides of that knife. <laughs> there was a little bit of blood on all the food for several weeks. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but I love that knife. I never knew a knife could be that sharp. I never knew it could do that well. I mean, cuts that I tried to do, but I couldn't. I mean, they are now flaying things and boning things like butter. Wow. 
So Kelly, you're going to love the new tool. It's going to do so much more than you could ever hope or ask for. You're going to be like, what have I waited for all my life? So thank you, Lord, for giving her the right tools in Jesus mighty name. <laughs> oh, Lord, I don't know why you guys like my words. <laughs> oh, all right. So I'm looking to see um, Prince Charles. What? Come on, Indiana. I was looking to see what was on, actually, to see, because I can tell some of you have gone, but not many. I mean, most of you are there, but I can't tell who's on because you haven't, not everybody types. So you have to type and let me know you're there. You're welcome, you're fine. <laughs> Prince Charles is one of my very wonderful stories. Uh, loved, he reached out to me years ago and um, we prayed him through, right, Charles? We, we prayed through until he got a beautiful breakthrough to see your family and I see your little girl and um, your wife, she's so beautiful. I just, I just think of where you were when you reached out to me and I didn't even know you. And I'm like, well, let's just pray. And I just love to see that. So Lord, I just thank you for Charles, Prince Charles, Lord. Thank God he is your, he is a prince. He is your son. Lord, I thank you, Father, for the passions that you put in his heart, Lord, the desire that you've given him, Lord, to pursue you, to reach out to you. God, I thank you, Father, for all the um, the music and the, and the things that go through him, Lord, and are a part of him, Lord. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> oh, sorry, this is where I'm going. Prince I, Charles, <laughs> I see that, like, there's uh, an attack that um, is, you know, eminent around you, um, but you have authority over it. And uh, when I, we have alligators, I know you guys don't, but it, that's what I see as it's a large attack. So I saw the alligator with its mouth wide open, and I saw you stuck a, uh, a stick in its mouth and jam the jaw open. So I feel like that you've got an attack, you see that it's coming, and if you'll just be, if you work with the Lord on it, you're more than capable to stop the attack. And I just saw that you put the stick in there and you just kept on, you know, moving around, doing what you were doing. You didn't even care it was there because you took care of it. So I feel like there's some spiritual authority that you have that you need to engage with you and the Lord that you're going to stop this thing that's trying to come up against you. And it's not going to be able to even harm you or hurt others. It'll be, um, it'll be stilled and you'll be able to do what you were called to do because I believe it's in the area where you're called to be. You need to be there. So um, that's what I got for you. If I am gonna be teaching a class on spiritual authority if, if you need help with that, but you might not, you might have that down. And then there's books and stuff. So um, Kenneth Hagen wrote a really good one. So anyway, that's what I would do. Take uh, your spiritual authority because you, my friend, were made to be in that space and this cannot push you out. So that's what I got for you. <laughs> Very good, Chanel. Shut the mouth of the enemy. Glory to God. Where was that? Come in. Yana. I wanted to pray for Yana, my friend. <laughs> so I just bless Yana in Jesus' name. Yeah, so um, I feel like, Yana, that God is giving you um, like a prophetic insight. I, and I don't, I don't, I think actually you have like maybe a friend too, or maybe it's a mentor or something that also has it. And um, I just saw that you were able to um, see clearly like spiritual revelation. So that's what I, I'll, I'll go with that better. It's revelation in the spirit. And um, I just saw that you were with another person that carried the same type of anointing on you. And I saw that you were able to, um, you know, you were able to bring that light and that wisdom 
you know, out, out to the people. So I feel like that there's a call on your life, maybe with this friend, but someone like-minded, that um, you're to release wisdom and spiritual revelation that you're called to do it. And if you do it, it will be embraced. People will receive it and, and it'll bring life. That that is something, a gifting that God has given you, just, just this beautiful wisdom and spirit of revelation. So that's what I saw for you. <laughs> yes true and if you want to contact Anne, um she has like a great some just a bunch of scriptures uh, that's for prince charles on spiritual authority so you can um do that and that was the book on kenneth hagan uh, on spirit i i just got it a few months ago and read it so it was really good so um let's see ellie ha huh, you got on i wasn't able to tag you thank you for anyone who tagged and shared this as you know i i, I wanted to but um they let me tag 20 people which is more than i normally ever get to tag so super excited but there was like 46 of you i think that um like post last week and probably wanted to have a tag but i couldn't do it so anyway i'm glad that you were able to make it i hope some of my sami friends were on i i didn't see them but i was i wasn't able to tag that far so nope i don't see any sami friends so I, hopefully i'll be able to get to them later maybe they'll pick be able to pick it up later yes you're sure welcome prince charles so glad that you were able to stop by so lord i just thank you lord for ellie brooks lord i thank you father for her life father i pray in jesus name your kingdom would come yes and your will would be done Yeah, I just saw you doing the backstroke and I felt like you feel like you're going backwards. <laughs> so, but you know what? The thing about the backstroke, there's also peace in it. <laughs> Sorry, I is weird stuff today. But I just felt like, like, you know, when you're doing the backstroke, it's almost like you got, you get to get your, catch your breath. If, when you're going forward and you have to, your head is in the water and you, it's, it's harder to breathe. It's harder to do that. You run out of breath quicker, but on the backstroke, you can actually do it for longer because you can get your breath in and you can keep an easy gait. And I just feel like you feel like you're going backwards right now, but it's actually um, a process where God's trying to um, give you a break and some peace in your life. And I feel like there's a refreshing that needs to happen because I feel like you got worn out. So that's what I, I, I saw for you. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Um, you're welcome, Yana. You're very welcome. So, Katya. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah, so Katia, I feel like there was a platform that you really felt like was gonna, uh, you know, bring you forward, like really help you to go forward and it, and it disappointed you and I saw it had broken. <clears throat> so I just feel like that, you know, just don't overdwell on it, just reassess. <clears throat> I feel like that the, the God has got another plan for you that that one didn't have the strength to stand on. You know, I some of it, I, I just felt like it had um, deteriorated. Um, makes me, anyway, so I feel like that uh, God's just like, you know, that didn't work. You know, let's reassess. He's got something better. He's got a different plan. I love, um, I love that sometimes his, you know, we feel like we're going after the Lord and, and I felt like you did. You felt like you're going off to the Lord. You were following his directions. And, you know, this didn't work out. But that's okay. It's all right. Sometimes we, we prophesy in part. We see in part. Sometimes we mess it, miss it a little bit. But it's all right because he's already got the next thing for you. <clears throat> What's going to help you? 
And so, Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray for revelation and discernment for Katia on what will propel her, what she does need to go to that next level, what she does need to get her um, to go forward right now. In Jesus' name, I pray that you make it um, prevalent. Yeah. And also, um, like, she would recognize it. And what I heard was the timing was off. So that's why it didn't work before. The timing was off. So you need the right timing. So Father, I just pray right now for Katya that she would see the timings of the Lord and that she would know when her season of favor is to move forward on this in Jesus' name. Glory to God. All right. So you're welcome. You're welcome, Yana. Um, let's pray for uh, Samuel. So Lord, I just thank you for Samuel. I thank you that you love Samuel, that you've got a plan for him, a beautiful one. Yeah, so Samuel, I immediately saw you at the chalkboard, and um, you ever seen those brainiacs that um, they get on the chalkboard with an equation and it fills the entire, entire chalkboard, and they're still scribbling and going, at, and I just felt like you were on one of those equations, one of those equations that fills the whole chalkboard, and you're still walk, working it out and working it out, and what I saw was steadfast, faithful, true, that you're still working it out, you still, you're going to get a conclusion, they, they get an answer to the problem. But sometimes you got to fill the chalkboard. And I just felt like that there is more to the problem. So you're writing it all out. You're putting it all out. It's you're, It's just you will get a solution, but there's still the process of, of working it all out. And you're still in that process. So hold on. Don't give up. You will get a solution. I see you circling the answer. It will come. Glory to God. Yes, Victoria. I will definitely pray for you. I was thinking about praying for you, and then uh, somebody else's name came up. Sorry. <laughs> then I'm going to pray for Natasha. So, Lord, I just thank you for Victoria. Yeah, so Victoria, I just saw you with a strawberry um, milkshake. <laughs> and I just felt like the Lord was saying that, you know, you're, the, it's that you, he likes you to have, to take time out to do some things that you like to do. And that he wants to be that kind of blessing for you. And that it's okay to do that and to just say, hey, I'm going to do something fun. And it doesn't have to be spiritual. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, life changing, but a strawberry milkshake on a warm sunny day, especially in Florida. Don't see me. But you know, just something that you want to do. So just, you know, take some time out and just do some things that are fun. And I also think that are you and maybe a little childish to other people. I don't know if um, milkshakes are that connotation in Norway, but you know, I just think you're you're allowed to, and he likes it when you do that. He likes it when you stop and have some fun with him, and he wants you to incorporate those things in your life. He wants you to enjoy this life. He wants you to have memories that you look back on, and you go, that was fun. That was good. Those were some good times. Natasha. Simon. You know, I used to be a Simon. <laughs> it wasn't spelled the same, but I did. I loved it because we used to play Simon Says and I'd be like, wow, I get to be Simon. <laughs> I bet you do too. <laughs> so let's pray for Natasha. So Natasha, I just feel like like there was some um, friendships that you really felt like got that, you know, 
I don't know. They got run like they just felt d demolished or destroyed. And it, they like friendships that you really felt like you would have had for a, a lifetime, like like really personal friends. And I just felt like that um, the whole relationship just you know it wasn't just like a little bit of a wipe out. It was quite like back and forth. Like it really got wiped out, and it's caused your heart to. Um, you know, to be broken on it. And I just feel like the Holy Spirit just wants to uh, comfort your heart that, um, you know, you are a loyal friend. You're a good friend. You're, you're um, someone that people can count on. And so I just bless you right now in the name of Jesus. I just bless you to your heart where um, these relationships and things that you had wanted didn't work out and I just pray father in the name of Jesus that you would um, bring about Lord a restoration if possible Lord that you would come in Lord and yeah I just feel like I just feel like if it's not them but it will feel like childhood friend so I just pray in Jesus name that you would give her childhood friends or the feeling that it's like a childhood friend, someone that, that it's like you've grown up together. So I just bless you to that, Natasha. I bless you to um, friendships that um, are alive in the spirit. I bless you to friendships that um, are full of loyalty and um, goodness and kindness. That I would say, I was thinking about this today, so I don't know why it was in my head, but I feel like it was for you is like my little grandbaby she always says like um oh this superpower of this person is this or the superpower of that and i just kept hearing her superpower is kindness and natasha i just believe that that's you that your superpower is kindness so may you attract those that like that superpower will embrace that superpower and also give it back in jesus name Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You guys, it was so great spending the afternoon with you and getting to talk to you about dreams. If you feel like this was helpful, please bless me by sharing it with somebody and, or bless them by sharing it if you feel like it would um, be a blessing to them and help them. So many times people can get waylaid because they go the wrong direction with their dreams. So if you think this will be helpful, if you ever had a friend who just took a dream and went crazy on it, then you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> And um, if you if this is something that you're thinking to yourself, hey, I want to learn more about, then make sure you message me. Aww. Hey, that's so good. Um, make sure you message me. Natasha, that's so good. Thank you for sharing that. So make sure you message me if you want to um, take any of the, these classes that are coming up so I'll know because I'm trying to figure out what times to put it. So I'll try to make it in a time that will work well for you if you let me know. So I'd love to um, do, do this journey with you. If you want to sew into this ministry, as always, very helpful and thank, I'm super friendly, super, super thankful as um you know, we uh, when we get our opportunity to go, then there won't be any worrying about it. We'll just go. So God bless you guys. You guys have a great day. Thanks for hanging out with me. It was always an honor and a blessing. See you guys on lap tomorrow, tomorrow night if you're in town. God bless. Bye.